another episode of Planet Attenborough. Soils. Soils and paraglacial areas affected by permafrost and the low temperatures. These are dominant factors in their formation. Bacterial activity in water logging may lead to the formation of acid humus. And just a few centimetres under the surface, there are blue grey zones caused by water logging. In coniferous forests, forests leaching and Lots of water may lead to pod cells developing. It's an area of ground which have all the nutrients washed out of it. And in some soils, angular fragments of rock may occur. And this is due to frost heaving and freeze thaw action. Plant! Right. Plants. As already shown, the climates associated with cold environments are varied and extreme. This includes extremes of temperature, precipitation and wind. Vegetation found in Arctic areas is well adapted to the climate in a number of ways. The main characteristics such as being small and highly seasonal uh, with the climate uh, are good at adaptations. Most plants are perennial therefore they live for several years although less than 10% of the ground may be covered with vegetation. However, uh, in areas locally there may be extremes of lichen and moss, etc. Geography. Yeah, it's geography. I was wondering what you were doing. And, um, well, I completely lost what I'm talking about. As I was saying, moss may cover a larger area, as you can see here. And, um, coming off that subject completely... You're filming... Okay, so geography, hang on. Um, in low arctic tundra, uh, there are going to be dwarf shrubs, mosses, uh, sedge, sedges, growth, and lichen. Net primary productivity, the rate of production of biomass that is available for consumption by herbivores. The next trophic level in the ecosystem. Animals. Ah, in glacial and irrigation environments, we can see polar bears and a panda in a zoo. They're very basic animals, but highly adapted, as we'll see in a second. They're trying to escape, but um, they can't stand up. <laughs> They're very dangerous, and I feel we should get out of here as soon as possible. Oh. A seal, penguin, and a spider. Huh? Animals in cold environments show many characteristics. Huh? Uh, there are very few species. <laughs> of the 8,600 species huh? of bird, only 70 breed in the Arctic. Uh, of the 3,200 mammals in the world, only 23 are found there. Huh? There are large numbers of single species, for example, huh? caribou and lemmings. <laughs> oh dear. Uh, population numbers are very cyclical. For example, lemmings have a three to seven year cycle. Many species don't only exist in the Arctic because they are extremely, extremely specialised, like polar bears, for example. Plants and an animals living in the Arctic are exposed to major climatic variations, even over very small distances, and therefore their variations lead to significant genetic variations between species. I didn't notice you. Hey, welcome to the common room. It's amazing here. Why don't you come over here? We have stuff. We have bins. We have chairs. Lockers. Over a thousand lockers. But don't take my word for it. Why not speak to this common room person? Me. Hello! 
Right. Well, you think that's it. You think all this is just it. But when you enter, when you come into the conference, I'll throw in this pool table for free.